Hello everyone, welcome to Classic Gaming Brothers. I'm Zachary Pierce. I'm Seth. And this is episode one, not episode yeah. zero. Of, actual uh, episode one. Yeah, the actual episode one of, uh, of our podcast, Classic Gaming Brothers, where we're going to talk about some classic gaming brother things. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have a tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I we do should we establish a tagline? Maybe we should have done that before episode that could have, one. That could have been done before episode one, but you know what? We're just gonna go with it. So uh, to go over episode, uh, oh, to go over classic gaming brothers format, uh, we uh, we're gonna have three segments. We'll have an introduction. We'll have the meat of the uh, the episode, which will be the second segment, and then we'll have our byway pass uh, segment at the end. Um, today's meat of the episode, we're gonna talk about genres but let's talk about uh what we've been playing recently well you want to go first i think because i think you had a uh, you had some show notes from episode zero yes yes so if you listen to episode zero which i'm sure you have uh listening to episode one now um if not you can go back and listen to it um we uh, we talked about Dragon Sphere, uh, a game that I actually went back and played, and uh, went through and beat. Uh, went through and beat a, a set, again. I beat it myself. I've I've never shown Zachary. And he's never watched me beat it. Um, but we did we did have an update. The game is no longer free on Good Old Games. It is still available on Good Old Games, but it is priced at the price of five dollars and ninety nine cents. So if uh, you feel like you need a good classic adventure game, then um, by all means, uh, you can go pick up the, uh, the the game for about six bucks. I'm sure they'll do a discount on it, um, but that it is priced at five ninety nine. Uh, it did take me about uh, four four and a half hours to play through it. Uh, if you're a new player, it may take you about five to six hours. I did do it over multiple sessions, so I. Uh, played with uh i played like about about a couple hours got to a halfway point and then uh saved uh, and picked it up later on another day um really enjoyable storyline uh like i i said halfway through the game it kind of uh goes in an entirely different direction that you weren't expecting it and uh it's it's a it's a it's still it's still classic great game to be playing yeah it's probably one i'll eventually uh finish uh, meanwhile, I've been playing um, definitely a different tone than Dragon Sphere, which is the the new Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, yeah? uh, yes, um, I've been playing it on PS4. I got it the day uh, it came out. So far, enjoying it very much. Um, it plays a lot differently than previous Star Wars lightsaber games that I've played, such as Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy. Um, but there is uh, there's a lot of good action sequences, a lot of uh, characters that are returning from the television shows, from the movies, um, and uh, it, overall just uh, a fun adventure game that uh, plays very similarly to the Bloodborne, Dark Souls, From Software type of games. A lot of parrying um kind of the action is oriented on uh dodging and then attacking not just like swinging your lightsaber blindly at a person until they die all right yeah so um do would you feel that it's more of an action game um i think if if anyone's ever played the uh if anyone's ever played the dark souls games or any game by from software like um sekiro which just came out um it's very action oriented but it's also about um judging your enemy's actions before they attack so that you can uh properly parry properly defend so it is an action game i would say it's very action oriented um has some platforming elements it has some puzzle elements um a lot of like force puzzles and stuff that you have to do um so it's kind of a good mixture of of all the different types of uh genres and such which so actually the the last episode episode zero um, we gave two recommendations for uh, games that were multiplayer or j- could be multiplayer uh, Dying Light which was Zachary's recommendation and um, uh, we we survived together was mine um, both of them we survived together specifically required multiple people so today our recommendations are both single player games that's right. Uh, 
very single player. <laughs> in, in fact, I don't think either game you can play with anybody. Yeah, no, actually, um, yeah, you can't in, uh, I think EA wanted to take, um, kind of took a beating from their previous forays into multiplayer, um, being, you know, SimCity, the two Battlefront games, and they got a very nice little beating handed to them from the fans so i think they kind of wanted to step back from the multiplayer element this time around and i think it works um especially the, because they have a, a good team working on the game itself the, the people behind uh uh titanfall respawn yes yes respawn and actually i just uh, read the news as of october uh steam and valve are no longer enemies they are now friends oh you mean uh, ea and valve right EA, oh yes, Steam, yes, yeah, Steam. Steam. You said Steam and Valve. Valve. Oh, Steam and Valve is is one company, EA <laughs> and Valve. Yes, EA. Um, who is the, the Valve is the producer of Steam. Uh, they are no longer enemies. They are now friends. Um, so they, you will start to see EA games show up on Steam, which is uh, just a win for the consumer. I think at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's way too many. It, that could be a topic it's, in itself. It's great. Yeah, maybe I can eventually have Mass Effect Three. I'll, on where I have Mass Effect 1 and 2. Uh, maybe <laughs> just one day, that'd be nice. Yeah, um, that's all too easy. <laughs> um, so uh, what, so, so what, we'll get on to the, the main topic here. Um, the, the main topic today, we wanted to talk about uh, genres, uh, specifically genres defined by Zachary and I, and just kind of how um, we think about genres versus uh how they everything's got multiple genre names actions adventure role playing we don't know necessarily how comfortable our listener is with um the definitions so we kind of want to lay out the definitions in our minds and how you guys um you know if you you think you define something else differently but this will always kind of ground the podcast if we refer to a game as something that's kind of like a role-playing game or an action game that's these definitions will kind of help you understand what we're talking about yeah exactly and um i mean a lot of our um, definitions will probably be in line with kind of the the standard uh definitions but at the same time um you know some people might have a different idea what an action game is versus what an adventure game might be um and when we refer to something as something it's going to be useful for you guys to kind of know where we're coming from so do you want what well i mean we'll start with like alphabetical order uh action kind of games um, I, I feel like personally, I feel like an action game is any game that's driven around the mechanics of the game itself. Mm-hmm. Um, games kind of like, uh, when I think of action game, I think of, uh, just cause, uh, that series of games, first person shooters can be under action games, call of duties and stuff like that. I would even say the, the new star Wars game would be under an action game. It's, you know, the game's not necessarily about the story. It's more about the enjoyment of the mechanics of the mm-hmm. game. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, I definitely can agree. I, I would say that, um, I guess the one place I would disagree is I think the, the new Star Wars game in particular has a has a blend of action-adventure mm-hmm. um, stuff. Uh, but I, I would agree in the sense that, like, Just Cause, I mean, I think I put in, like, 30 hours into Just Cause 2, and I don't remember the story of Just Cause 2. Right. Uh, <laughs> because, I, you know, you don't play Just Cause for the story. You play it because you're having a good time blowing stuff up. Um, right. Or, or that, you know, people forget that like tf2 has a story or that overwatch has a story because they're so focused on it just being an action game you know just a right. shooter um right. so and i think that yeah i think that's a very fitting description is that an action game is, is centered around the mechanics it's you know it's about the shooting it's about the blowing things up yeah exactly and and of course there there are multi-genre games there are sub-genre games this is really kind of like our our big buckets of how we put games in and the games will generally roll up under one of these buckets in some way or form um do you want to take out uh take the uh the next genre there yeah so um adventure games how we i guess me and seth both kind of i think agree on this is that they're games that are primarily driven around the story um they're also games that um in at least in my experience will tend to play around with um, gameplay mechanics in a sense that the the gameplay mechanics um, are, are usually either unique for the game, but they all kind of do the same thing. Um, so, for example, if you play Dragon Sphere versus um, Zork or a Telltale game, um, 
pretty much you're doing the same kind of gameplay but at the same time it does it in a unique way for each experience um but primarily the gameplay mechanic is there to tell the story it's not there to do like what just cause is doing with its gameplay mechanics right and i i think there can be uh i think a, a good portion a good majority of adventure games generally have a very linear story um that could branch a little bit um but the dragon sphere game that i play is going to be the same dragon sphere game that you play and will generally resolve the same way um it has the same kind of end there may be multiple different endings with like um but even with the telltale series of games you may make different choices, but overall, the end was still the same. Yeah. Um, the Gabriel Knight series is a great series of games. Uh, there's Gabriel Knight 1, 2, and 3. Um, all three of those games done by Jane Jensen, um, they are all really good stories but adventure games to me are like books yeah they're really good stories but they end the same yeah exactly and i think that's true with with um i think like for example life is strange which is a a newer adventure game um Mm -hmm. does some kind of very similar things in the sense that your experience with life is strange might be slightly different from mine but for the most part it's a 50 50 shot at what your ending is going to be so the you know you might have the same ending i might have a different ending but if you replay it you might have the same ending i get anyway so it's some games will offer almost like the illusion of uh kind of variable gameplay but in the most for the most part you can play a game like um, Life is Strange or a Telltale game, 100% the same way you play. Uh, someone else plays that game. Right. Uh, it, which, just as someone who might read the book, right? Exactly. The, multiple people could read the same book. Everyone's read, or a good portion of people have read Harry Potter. It's the same book to everybody, but everybody gets a different uh, feeling from it. Right. Uh, so... Uh, so the next genre is uh, role-playing games. Um, now these role these games are ge- generally driven around improving a character's abilities and are are usually story driven. But it's about the path that you take. Um, so, for example, you may play a role-playing game where you are a mage or you may be a fighter, and as you evolve that character, you may go down different skill trees and different paths to. Um, to have a different experience than somebody else who decided to play as a different class. Um, so some classic role-playing games are like Pillars of Eternity or Baldur's Gate. Also, inclusive in that is like massive multiplayer games like World of Warcraft or Star Wars The Old Republic or looter shooters even like Destiny, where the game is not necessary. The game is about getting new loot, it's about to evolving your character's abilities getting different powers and is really centered around becoming better in the game as it were like the character the character evolving yeah um and it's also interesting to see how role-playing games in themselves have as you mentioned looter shooters have these subgenres. Mm-hmm. so um you know you have your traditional um uh, you have your traditional RPGs that you'd think of as like Baldur's Gate, Pillars of Eternity, and then you also have something like a JRPG. Um, so like mm-hmm. Final Fantasy, yep. um, Kingdom Hearts, which is more of an action RPG. It's not turn-based. Um, or um, even even some people will describe, as mentioned before, Dark Souls as having JRPG elements because right. it is based on leveling your character up and making them better and and using that to drive the story. Uh, right yeah and having those branching paths with your what your character does change drives the story right yeah exactly exactly and and i think one thing that's kind of cool and interesting about rpgs is it really makes you become the character so even if it's not like in um dungeon and dragons where you make the character completely from scratch the character is yours because you made them that way through your choices of of character abilities and traits um and actions in the game you know a lot of rpgs have branching storylines ways to finish the games that are um very different from from how someone else might finish the game 
exactly exactly um do you want to go into the next one there yeah so simulations um this is another one that i think is um definitely has some kind of subgenre areas you can play with when i think of simulations i kind of i i have two kind of simulations i think of i think of profession simulations so um in seth's notes i see he has like farm simulator uh flight simulator bus simulator um there's it, it goes on there's a simulator for almost everything um, right. and then there's also economic and kind of life simulations. Um, so like the Sims, Sim City, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Mall Tycoon, kind of games where you're not playing as a specific person doing something, you're playing as kind of an entity. So like, for example, in Roller Coaster Tycoon, you're playing as the controller of an entire theme park who might not be just one person, but it, you, that's the action that's kind of how you're taking it on or in sim city you're playing as the quote-unquote mayor who has way more power than a normal mayor would usually have uh right. it can you know build summon th- lightning th- summon lightning in godzilla <laughs> um <laughs> so and, and or with the sims where you're literally playing as destiny for these people and controlling <laughs> their whether or not they're gonna go pee that afternoon so yeah. um I think I, I I think when I think of simulation games, I think they're they don't they almost never have what could be described as a story. Um, they almost never have um, really an end. Uh, there might be an end goal. So like Roller Coaster Tycoon had a lot of goals. You had to make a certain money by a certain time. SimCity does that too, but you can turn those goals off for most of these games and you can just kind of play them for <laughs> virtually forever. forever. Yeah. 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 I know. I, I think actually um, to go back to a farming simulator, there's a farming simulator. 2019 is a, is a game that you can purchase um, and you can play it with your friends. So then you could have three or four guys or gals, whatever um, running a farm and, you can have you can compete with each other um but you have to do everything in that game so you don't have you don't just the farm doesn't just go on its own but you have to find you have to buy the seed you have right. to plant the seed you have to water the seed you have to then um like um trim the seed back and then you have to harvest the seed and everything you need to do you need to do with equipment and the bigger your farm the more heavy equipment you need the more heavy equipment you need the more money you need and then you realize you run yourself into debt and really just kind of destroy your farm's entire economy if you take on too much loan or you lease too much equipment and when me and my friends were playing we were buying everything originally and we were like we're just running out of money and then we figured out that we just lease things for seasons and eventually we figured out the farming economics and and just buying cheap pickup trucks and carrying way too much load so the pickup truck wasn't even working but you have to and then you physically drive everything around and um it's it's a game that's fun especially if if you're playing with your friends or you have a mind that likes to think that way yeah and i also think that a lot of simulation games are good for people who wouldn't necessarily call themselves quote-unquote gamers um to get into i mean um i guess the perfect example is i was at a walmart not too long ago i was i was in the video game section looking at some of the games they had um in their very very small small collection of games for the computer and there was a guy who looked like a farmer like literally like a farmer was wearing overalls and like a flannel picking up a copy of their most recent farm simulator so uh I, I think the cool thing about simulation games is that for the most part if 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 you're interested in doing something but you might not say have the money to go run run a farm or or fly a plane or uh, operate a train in japan then there's usually a game available for you uh, yeah absolutely um i have a friend who uh played a lot of farming simulator and in farming simulator you need to my my friend mike and he um had that you have tractors and your tractors pull things like uh you may have a cedar or a, a water tank behind you and you have to back the truck up and the and the way backing up with 
with um, vehicles, if you have like a trailer or something, the trailer generally goes in the opposite direction of where you're trying to back it up into. Hmm. And my buddy has a trailer, and he said that Farming Simulator taught him to be better at backing up his own trailer in his real life. Yeah. So. Um, because he learned about kind of like being able to see it in different perspectives that you wouldn't and have it react realistically because of the physics engine and all of that driving the game yeah. and, and you know people make fun of them but um the games are usually really well made um and mm-hmm. usually have very good physics engines i mean barring yes. a few weird glitches you can usually get to happen uh, i've seen some funny things of people like flipping tractors uh like super high into the air in in a farming simulator game but besides those type of glitches for the most part they try to keep it as real as possible and that's kind of the point of a simulation game it's to be a simulation right right and um so fine oh and the sims of course i i mean the sims is the it's a, a life simulator um came from the uh the brain of uh will wright yes yeah who also um, made spore another uh, yep yes Simulation he did he, yeah. and a number of the uh maxis games he was yes. a he was a what, founder or at least a uh a very important employee of maxis um and the sims i think were actually uh, the history of it maybe you might know more but um from my understanding the sims wasn't going to it was originally an a- architecture game yeah uh, so will man. wright um will, will wright was working on I don't remember the game. He was working on a different game at the time. It was more of a like um, action-y game or something like that. And he realized he was having more fun designing the houses and the buildings um, and like the layouts and stuff of the game than he had any fun in actually designing the actual gameplay. Um, right. So he wanted to kind of take that and also his love of home architecture design software uh, which he had um, and bring that to the mainstream. And I think his original idea, I don't think his original idea even had characters Sims, in it. No. Yeah. No. And yep. It wasn't until um, they were doing work on Sim Copter that he started to get the idea to put Sims in because of the AI they were working with in Sim Copter um, kind of yep. gave him the idea of how, because the AI in Sim Copter was kind of, it was rudimentary, but it was kind of impressive because the, the little Sims, I think actually have day to day routines um yeah. so certain sims in simcopter if you like will follow one if you had the time and patience will like go certain places but always go back to the same building which is their house sort of deal um so i think that's heavily what inspired him to go into making what became the sims uh, which was yeah the, which is uh, yeah yeah it was Last. a landmark success for that <laughs> yeah yes. uh, there it's in its fourth iteration yes um it it does have some practices that um it has like well it's always had you buy the sims and then you get uh like 30 expansion packs and all this other stuff right, that right. costs money and you end up spending a couple hundred dollars on getting a complete package of the game yeah and then by the time the new sims comes out it's, it's even worth having those expansion packs i mean i can't yes. count i can count the times i've gone into thrift stores and uh antique stores and just seen stacks of sims 2 dlc packs just in the yeah. corner you know <laughs> for a dollar a piece live sort of large well, live large is an original one yeah yeah um, yeah live in large making it? magic uh, uh making magic um yeah all those original sims games the uh sims 4 actually is going to have a university expansion coming out oh that's exciting soon uh it's a full x pack coming out for that company uh, for that game um it should be released uh i i want to say before the end of the year oh cool soon nice um yeah so they'll bring bring news from university they've had university packs in almost all of the editions of the sims so it is just makes sense that they um will make it for the fourth there's been enough sims and enough expansions in the sims that you can generally track how long the sims is going to be around based on the amount of expansions that they they are missing um so i guess because in my opinion i kind of relate relate the two genres um do you want to take us into strategy games yeah sure um so strategy games the way that i've kind of defined it's a, it's a games that are primarily management game uh so you're either managing an army nation companies uh so generally thought of like real-time strategy games where you're um managing like warcraft starcraft civilization um 
where you're managing either units in armies like in Warcraft or um, or you're managing uh, entire nations like in the Civilization series um, where you you're the primary game element of the game is the uh, strategic control of of the resources that are given to you. Um, I've also lumped in, lumped in, in my definitions, kind of the tycoon games, um, like Planet Coaster and Game Dev Tycoon and Hospital Tycoon. These type of games, uh, Zoo, Planet Zoo, these type of games I feel have a strategy element to them. Um, Zach also thinks that there are very simulation elements as well. Um, uh, so I think that it's I think they they do kind of blend and I, I think mm. at that t- at at that point um, I think that there are a lot of games that can fall under multiple buckets they can be an action adventure game uh, a role playing adventure game um, a simulation strategy game a action strategy game yeah yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah I mean simulation just... role playing game. <laughs> I mean, Empire uh, Empire Earth, I would say, is an action strategy game. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, have... Empire Earth has a different pacing than your other, uh, <laughs> um, it's, or uh, what is it? The uh, oh, what is that game? Um, the Age of Decadence. Age it's of Decadence. Like a, yes. Have yeah. you played Age I, of Decadence? I, I, I've seen gameplay of it. I, yeah. You just die. Yeah. <laughs> That's the game. It's called. I actually played. A, I had like an hour hour and change run in age of decadence where i didn't wow. die i was pretty excited That's yeah awesome. <laughs> yeah it's well, a tough game. yeah or like um i mean whenever i play with some of my friends playing like a age of empires or rise of nations will often mm. turn into a anxiety driven adventure game of sorts as as usually we play with an ai who then fills the entire map with units and then uses like a stream of units to attack us at one point <laughs> uh so or or when i play rise of nations and i build nukes before my friends are out of the bronze age um, yeah, usually they're very happy about that. <laughs> the same like uh, in Civilization, when you uh, have uh, if you develop nuclear technology, you get uh, hit hit around by the uh, the uh, uh, opponents there. Yeah. Um, there's a uh, Stellarius and uh, Stellaris or something. Stellaris and um, Masters of Orion are very similar uh, simu- simulation strategy games. Um, that take place in space. Oh yeah, yeah. And and um, Eve Online would be a kind of example of the MMO strategy games in in yes. a way. Yeah. Yeah, um, in, a, in a way. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> apart from the rampant scandals that occur in Eve Online. Yeah. But... <laughs> yes. It, it's a very difficult game to uh, just. Uh, it's got a very steep learning curve, as it were. Uh, I uh, was playing though uh, Masters of Orion, where you could play as different alien races, and um, I started. And in, in order to travel in Masters of Orion, you need to have warp technology to get through certain areas of the map. Okay. And you get warp technology at a certain stage of the game, and I was playing this bug race that was very similar to like the Zerg or the Tyranid type yeah. kind of alien, and the only people that I could access were these Terran races who are kind of like humans, but there's also humans in the game. So they're not, not humans, but still humanoids. And, um, so they're the only ones I can interact with and I can't interact with anybody else. And there's eight people. There was me and my friend, Ryan, the first, the dying light, Ryan, as I'll call him from now on dying light, Ryan and I were playing this game and we were playing with, uh, six other bots and the, one of the, the Terrans were the bot. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I was being an aggressive race, and I, I killed them <laughs> before course, yeah. anyone else developed the technology to warp over to our area of the map. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so then, when people warped over, I was a nice alien race and said, oh, hello, <laughs> welcome to Liberia of the space. And nobody else in the entire game interacted with the Terran race. And to this day, they just are not known as being a race that existed ever in that entire continuity of <laughs> Masters of Orion. <sighs> Of my uh, aggressive uh, push out there. Yeah, I mean, it, like like I mentioned with uh, Rise of Nations when I was playing, I was playing a one round with uh, a few of my friends, and one of them in particular was I don't even think he I think he just made it out of the Bronze Age, and I was sending uh, stealth fighters 
uh past his bases to just show him <laughs> to kind of keep him on edge um and when i realized that he was he was advancing faster than i wanted him to i nuked his capital so that <laughs> he had to deal with that so <laughs> uh, i was uh that's, he, now he never wants to play rise of nations with me <laughs> that's, that's that's good i i had a similar experience in civ we uh there was a NPC, there was a computer that uh, had such a high, had one city. Everyone else was wiped out and they had one city and they had a super high defense. But we were so taxed from our war of conquering everybody that we could only make one unit at a time. So then we would run our little uh, like soldiers, like our one base unit soldiers up against the base and just kept running up against it over and over and over again as they died but we slowly attritioned the computer so oh, that we good. would win yeah and that's after a civ game so you know the three days that i was playing it for uh, right great right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, what happens so yeah i think that um overall covers our um yeah that's a genres. Our definition yeah yeah, I think that's a good. I think those are good, kind of solid definitions. Kind of what. So that's those are what we're, we have in our mind when we talk about games going forward in different podcasts. You can always revert back to episode one and and say then they define adventure games at that time. We though there is the assumption uh, if you are listening to a video game podcast that you have some interest in video games and thus you probably have some of your own ideas. Right. So let us know. Um, I, I don't know if there's going to be a comment section anytime soon, but you can always email us as well yeah. um, and let us know about that. So we're going to go into our next segment, which is what we call Byway Pass. Uh, Seth, do you want to just quickly remind the listeners? Yes. So Byway Pass is a segment that we will be ending all of our episodes with, with um, kind of like our recommendations on new and upcoming video games or to be honest any any kind of game that we're just kind of thinking about usually maybe a remastered game we're going to try and um look at games coming out as our primary target since there's a lot of games coming out um and we're just here to kind of recommend whether you should buy the game wait on the game to buy it at a discount or pass on it completely um so in the last episode uh we talked about planet zoo and we talked about the game that star you, wars. Oh, star wars yeah, yeah. yeah. which, um, which so, i bought <laughs> uh, which zachary said by wait and he bought yes um and then i said wait on zoo uh tycoon or zoo tycoon wow uh planet zoo and i said wait and i'm still waiting on it um because i feel like that it it's probably going to get a discount during the Steam winter sales here. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, that's kind of like what the segment's here for. Once again, our recommendations, take them with a grain of salt. Buy a game because you want to buy a game. Um, don't buy a game because I told you to. And just if you like the games that we like and think that we think you think we have good ideas, then by all means, take yeah. a recommendation from us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um... So, um, do do you want to go first, or uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think I went first on the first. Well, you can go first. You go okay. First. Um, I mean, so the game that uh, I actually, while I was looking it up just a moment ago, realized I think it is already technically out. Uh, right. <laughs> but it's um, uh, Black Sad under the skin, um, which is an a- uh, adventure game from uh, Pendulo Soft uh, Studios. Uh, published by Microids, it's going to be out for Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. And it's based on the Black Sad comic book series from uh, Spanish author Juan Diaz Canales and artist um, Juanjo Guarnido, um, which are about a hard-boiled private investigator who is also a cat. Um, and it, it from at least from the uh, trailer and such that I've seen from the game, it has a very uh, telltale uh, L.A. noir, um, Sherlock Holmes like from Frogware um, kind of style of gameplay. It's going to utilize a lot of quick time events, which is kind of a staple for for like telltale and stuff like that. Um, it it's, doesn't use a point and click interface; it uses a direct character control. Um, and apparently will not feature an inventory, which I kind of am curious how, how that comes to play in terms of, in terms of solving stuff. Right, right. Cause, uh, traditionally, uh, adventure games require, uh, 
uh, inventory to solve problems. Even the Telltale games, you had some manner of pick up this crowbar and use it on the door. Exactly, uh, exactly. Inventory problems. Telltale, which is a, a defunct publisher or de- developer now, um, did make a lot of adventure games and and will be uh, a focus of one of our future episodes. Uh, though I actually have also been eyeing um, Black Sad. I think that the cat looks like my cat and has it kind does. of biased me to wanting to purchase a story about my and then in my canon it'll just be my cat being the hard boiled detective <laughs> solving problems. My cat whose name is Pokey is not as uh, hard boiled as uh, what who Black Sad appears to be. Yes. Um, but what, so what? What? What is your uh, current uh, rate, rate rating for it? Oh, I think I'm currently um, going to wait on it, um, mostly because I realized it just came out, and, uh, <laughs> and I I did just just buy <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order. Um, also, I just kind of want to I want to give it a wait um, and just see how you know reviews and such come in in terms of uh, how people feel about the game. Apparently. Um, it, it did have some earlier issues with um, some technical errors, um, which was what caused it to actually get delayed for an initial period of time. So I kind of want to make just make sure that it's you know all work in order, people like it, and it's it's not going to be me buying a game that's potentially broken. Um, right, so, right. Yeah. I, I the, actually uh, the, not to talk about Black Sad or their publisher. Um, but I, to talk about again about Telltale again, um, I actually had Batman, the one of the Batman games, and the game had an uh, a like a fault in it where it, whenever you clicked an an, like an answer to some question, the game just crashed. Oh, it, that... Only if you went down a specific path of the story. Oh. And uh, so I reached out to them, and they I, I had to put my game on hold, and they ended up. Um, patching the next series of patches fixed my problem, but they were very um, communicative, uh, like communicative, and they were very good as a as a uh, uh, as a support team. Yeah. So if you ever have issues with video games, I always recommend sending a message to their their customer service to say, hey, you know, can I put a ticket in because X Y Z is broken, and they w- it may be a global ticket issue, like global problem, but they might at least uh, let you know how they're fixing it. But I'm I'm also interested in Black Sad, and I think I'm gonna share your your uh, weight rating there um, based on thinking in my head that we're getting close to the holidays, and it's a forty dollar game, and maybe I can get it for thirty. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see kind of what comes out, how how the game ends up turning out and uh maybe when it's on sale i'll, I'll snag it so my uh by weight pass uh game is going to be uh i'm gonna you pick a game that's not coming out for quite some time and and i'm probably gonna rue that i picked it on episode one but uh it's uh, cyberpunk 2077 Ooh. uh which is uh, a game that is being developed and published by cd project red who are also known for the witcher series um it's a it's set in a open world action adventure uh, using our definitions there, the game should be story heavy and also uh, game mechanic heavy, um, where you uh, play as a um, like a mercenary who's trying to uh, go go after and, and deal with the uh, the the hard hitting life of uh, a cyberpunk world. Cyberpunk is a genre that's de- generally a dystopia future where uh, people have cybernetics and very much a uh, kid to um, the, um, the game. It's at the, uh, what's the one that just comes out with the Jensen? Um, uh, Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar to Deus Ex. Um, Dis and Deus Ex Two and all those guys, um, uh, that type of world or Shadowrun for uh, role playing sessions or also PC games. Shadowruns are great games. Um, kind of that type of world where it's a very dystopic future. The game looks great. Um, based because it's a CD Projekt Red game. Very excited based on um what they did with The Witcher. I'm a very big fan of Witcher Three, and uh. I, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Cyberpunk 2770. Uh, my rating is actually going to be a buy. I think I'm going to pay full retail sixty dollars as soon as it's available oh, and nice. start installing it as soon as I as soon as I can. I uh, I'm very I very much looking forward to it. Uh, I it's kind of like my just my jam 
kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You'll pay sixty dollars and you'll jump right into the arms of uh, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Who was um, they? They what they shouted? He didn't he say that somebody was uh, beautiful or something? He, or? he said everyone was beautiful. No, <laughs> like and specifically somebody shouted. At oh him. yeah, yeah. Someone shouted on when he was on stage. You're beautiful, and he goes, "You're beautiful." And he's like, "You're all yeah. beautiful." <laughs> yes. Uh, Keanu Reeves is a national treasure. He is a national um, treasure. So uh, that that is going to wrap us up here. So just to go through some things, we do have social media presence. We have a Facebook page, which is maybe where you have where you found this podcast. Uh, the Facebook page is at Classic Gaming Brothers, all one word. Uh, we also have a Instagram. We don't know. We're very confused at why we have an Instagram since Instagram <laughs> is photographs and we're a podcast, but uh, maybe we'll take pictures of games that we're taking or screenshots or something. We don't know. Um, we also have a Twitter. Um, yes, we, we do have a Twitter. Um, and the Twitter is at CG Brothers Pod. That's CG Brothers P-O-D. Um, and on there, we'll tweet out uh, announcements about new episodes um, or just general uh, Twitter retweets. Yeah, retweets of funny memes and stuff. Um, but yeah, give sure. us a, give us a follow. Um, and uh, remember, uh, we, oh yeah. Well, we we also um, have a a uh, an email. Oh uh, yes, our, yes. We yes, have a Gmail, Gmail. Um, where we will be taking. Uh, feedback and commentary and telling us whether or not you you like our ideas you like to hear our voices you think our voices are annoying zach's too loud i'm too loud uh the email uh you you, you don't like we're talking what we talk about you I, then i i don't know if you're still listening but anyway you got to the end we appreciate you listening let us know feedback give us some comments our uh, email is classic gaming brothers at gmail.com i will not spell it out because that's I listened back to the episode and I of episode zero, and I thought that was annoying. So, <laughs> classic gaming brothers, all one word. If you don't get it right, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I figured they could also just look at the name of our podcast and combine. The, you know, <laughs> yes, you can take our Facebook page, put that at Gmail, and write us a nice letter. Yes, uh, you can also uh, comment on Facebook, uh, like, share, follow, do all those things to make the social media people happy. Yeah. And, yeah. and remember, don't play games like my brother. And don't play games like my brother. I've been Seth. I've been Zach. And we've been the Classic Gaming Brothers. All right. <laughs>